It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Uh, this next question is from Frank. Uh, he's a YouTuber. Uh, Frank says, uh, late 20s, looking to buy a home. As interest rates may go up, at what weight would you recommend going from prioritizing investing versus paying off mortgage to maximize wealth building? So here's, I, I want to make sure I understand his question. He's in his late 20s looking to buy a home. Yeah. I think he's trying to ask the question, uh, I'm investing, should I pull that back to uh, save for a down payment? And then once I have a mortgage, should I pay that off quickly? I think those are the two questions that Frank is really walking through. Yeah, I mean, when you're in your 20s, whoo, I tell you, anybody who's 40 and beyond is so jealous of you because mm-hmm. you will reach a point, especially you get to be in your 50s, you're like, why was I such a knucklehead in my twenties? Why didn't I? Why didn't I save more money to and then invest that money so I don't have to work as hard? So I have the freedom to do the decisions because I want to do this, not versus I have to do this. And so when I find out that twenty somethings are thinking about taking some of those dollars that could go ahead and start building that army of dollar bills, and they're saying, "Hey, let's pay off the two and a half percent mortgage," I'm just like, you got to recognize the two components of your life. And that's why we've done such a, we've really focused on trying to put analytics, putting math to it, to so you could know the difference between wealth creation versus wealth preservation and making sure you keep your wealth. I think anybody who is under 45 years of age, you need to be thinking about, am I doing enough to maximize my army of dollars to, to invest, to get compounding growth, and making sure that I am getting enough underlining foundation of money so I don't have to work so hard later in my life. I don't think a 20-something usually have, has reached that goal. Mm, nope. um, because remember, you got to get to over 25% of your gross income is going to the future and investing. That's not counting prepaying mortgage That's debt. Right. I get that question. No, that doesn't count. That money's not working. It's locked up. It's in there going... Hey, can I get out and go to work for you? <laughs> you, you prepaid a 2.5% interest rate. Now, there's a difference. You get to 45. If you've done all the other steps of the financial order of operations, you're now no longer thinking about, do I have to maximize every dollar? Because, look, there's a huge difference between a 20-year-old that every dollar could turn into 88 versus a 40-year-old that it could turn into $7 versus a 50-year-old that could turn to $3 right. when it's invested. So make sure you're maximizing those dollars that can get you the 40, 50, 60, 80 time multiple while you're in your 20s versus when you're in your late 40s to 50 where maybe your money triples by the time you retire. That's why I tell people focus on maximizing the wealth, building when you're younger, then when you get over 45 now, You've done all the other work. You can prepay that sure. low mortgage. But I'll let you. You're very nuanced about this because you always you bully me because I'm in that. I'm about to be completely debt free, uh-huh. mortgage and all. Yep. And you pick on me about that and tell me I'm horrible with math. Well, just what yeah. would you tell a fellow young person about about this decision? Yeah, I would say if you're in your 20s, prepaying your mortgage should not be a top priority. Wealth building should be your top priority. Now, if you're thinking about how to get into a house, I get that that's a yeah. problem a lot of folks are facing right now, right? House pr- housing prices are increasing astronomically in most markets, and you're like chasing this car that's pulling away faster and faster and faster. One of the things that we do for our folks is we give you a little bit of a reprieve. When it comes to your first home, if this is your very first home, don't feel like you have to save 20% to put as a down that's payment. Right. That's conventional wisdom, and there are some benefits to doing that. But if you wait, if you wait, you may never actually get in that home. So we give you some latitude and say, hey, if you can get to 3.5%, 5%, 10% down on the home, and you're still making sure that your mortgage and your housing costs don't exceed 25% of your gross income, that's okay for your first house. So let that give you a, like, take a breath. Okay, I just got to save up 5%. I can get in the house, I can get the mortgage, and then as soon as I get in there, I'm going to get back to wealth building. Yeah. I'm going to go get my army of dollar bills working. That's okay. Now, if you're going to do your second home, third home, upgrade, whatever, got to do 20% then. But for the first one, it's okay to give yourself a little bit of time to get there.